Okay, let's kick things off. Imagine trying to build a 3D model of, say, a room just from a bunch of photos you took. It sounds simple maybe, but it's actually an incredible challenge. Oh, absolutely. Traditionally, you're looking at some really complex geometric calculations step by step. You find matching points, figure out camera angles, build a sparse model, then refine it. Right, like putting together a giant intricate puzzle, lots of trial and error, lots of math, trying to make everything fit perfectly. Structure from motion, bundle adjustment. These are the classic terms. Exactly, SFM and BA. Powerful, but uh, very geometry heavy. They rely on optimizing positions and camera parameters iteratively. It takes time, it takes compute power. And machine learning, well, it's popped up before, right? Helping find those matching points, maybe guessing depth from one picture. Sure, helping with parts of the pipeline. But that core geometric reasoning, that big optimization step at the end, that was usually still the bottleneck. Mm -hmm. Geometry was king. But, and this is where it gets really interesting with the material you shared on VGGT, the Visual Geometry Grounded Transformer. What if you could, you know, mostly bypass that complex geometric post-processing? Mm -hmm. What if a neural network could just look at all the pictures and predict the whole 3D scene, the cameras, the depth, everything, pretty much directly. That's the fundamental question VGGG tackles. It's proposing a really different, a neural first approach. Can the network learn the geometry well enough to give you solid results without needing all that traditional geometric heavy lifting afterwards? So that's our mission for this deep dive. We're going to unpack VGGT based on the sources, the paper, the details you found. What is it? How is it such a shift? What are its real innovations, its strengths, maybe its weaknesses? Sounds good. We should probably remember those traditional methods like Colmap or kind of the bedrock. Mm -hmm. Finding points, triangulating, running bundle adjustment. That's the standard flow they perfected. And even when ML started creeping in, giving better starting points or features. That final, often slow, geometric refinement step was still crucial for top accuracy. Right, and even some more recent deep learning things, maybe looking at pairs of images. Yeah, methods like DAST3R or MST3R often focus on pairwise relationships, predicting relative poses or depth between two views, but getting a full scene from, say, a hundred images. You'd still need to stitch all those pairwise results together somehow, right? Which seems... Like another form of geometric post-processing, exactly, aligning all those pairs globally. So how does VGGT try to break free? What's actually inside this thing that lets it take this neural first path? Okay, the core idea is it's architected as a large feed-forward transformer network. Mm -hmm. Think models like GPT or vision transformers, but applied to this multi-view geometry problem. Feed-forward meaning it just processes the input once, straight through, no loops, no iterations. Pretty much. It takes all the input images and the sources say it can handle dozens, even hundreds, processes them together, and in that single pass it predicts the key 3D outputs. Whoa, okay. Hundreds of images, single pass. That is a huge difference from just looking at two images at a time. It really is. That pairwise approach often needed those extra fusion steps we mentioned. VGGT aims to produce usable camera poses, depth maps, even 3D point locations for all the images directly from the network in, like, Seconds. Usable results directly. Okay. okay, that's the goal. So how does the transformer architecture enable that? What's the magic? Well, it builds on standard transformer blocks, showing you don't necessarily need some completely new 3D-only architecture. It starts by turning the images into tokens, like words in a language model. Mm -hmm. It uses a pre-trained vision model, like DNOV2, for this. DNOV2. Right. That's known for learning really good visual features without needing labels. So it gets a good initial understanding of each image. Then what? Then comes a key innovation inside the transformer layers, something they call alternating attention, or AA. Alternating attention. Okay, what's that doing? It switches between two kinds of attention within the network layers. First, frame-wise attention. That looks at relationships within a single image's tokens. Understanding textures, local shapes, that sort of thing. Makes sense. Processing each picture individually. But then it alternates with global attention. And this is crucial. Global attention looks at relationships between tokens across all the different images simultaneously. Ah, so that's how it connects the views. It's figuring out this point in image one corresponds to that point in image five, but implicitly across the whole batch. Exactly. It lets the network integrate information from all viewpoints, understand the spatial relationships between them, and build up that coherent 3D understanding. 
it's balancing the what's in this picture with how do all these pictures fit together? And the sources really emphasized this, didn't they? They showed through experiments, ablation studies, that this alternating approach works much better for this multi-view task than just throwing everything into global attention all the time. Yes, that design choice is a core part of its success. This AA backbone learns a really rich representation that understands the multi-view scene geometry. Okay, so the backbone processes everything with this alternating attention. Then how do we get the actual outputs, like cameras and depth? That's where the prediction heads come in. Specific output tokens from the transformer backbone are fed into different smaller networks or layers the heads each designed to predict a specific thing. Like specialized tools. Kind of. First, there's a camera head. It takes certain tokens and predicts the intrinsics, focal length, stuff like that, and the extrinsics, the 3D position and rotation for every single input camera. And they do something clever with setting the coordinate system, right? Yeah, they anchor the whole 3D coordinate frame to the very first camera in the input sequence. They use some special learnable tokens to help the network establish this consistent frame. Got it. First camera is the origin. What other heads are there? Then you have the dense heads. These use a technique called DPT, which is common for turning transformer sequence outputs back into image-like grids. These heads predict dense depth maps. Right, distance per pixel. And also dense point maps for each image. Point maps. Okay, refresh me on that. How is that different from depth? So a point map, in VDGT's definition, gives you the actual 3D coordinate, X, Y, Z, in space for the surface point seen at each pixel. But crucially, these coordinates are all defined relative to that first camera's frame. Ah, so it's not just distance from the current camera. It's the actual 3D location in a fixed scene-wide coordinate system, viewpoint invariant. Exactly. It's a direct prediction of the 3D structure in a global frame. And these dense heads also output something for tracking points? Yes, they output dense feature maps. Now, the transformer itself doesn't directly output the tracks, like point trajectories. But these features it learns are very informative about geometry and appearance. So what uses those features? A separate tracking module, something like CoTracker 2, is used. It takes these features from VGGT plus query points and predicts how those points move across the different frames. Importantly, this tracker is trained jointly with the main VGGT network. Okay, so end-to-end -end training, but the tracking logic is somewhat separate. Right. Smart. And all this cameras, depth, point maps, tracking features, it's all learned together. Yes, through multitask learning. They use a combined loss function that pushes the network to be accurate on all these predictions simultaneously. But wait, aren't some of those outputs a bit redundant? Like, if you have the camera pose and the depth map, you can calculate the 3D point map geometrically, can't you? You absolutely can. And that's one of the most interesting findings they highlighted. Training the network to explicitly predict all of these things, even with that redundancy, actually makes the overall performance better. Really? How so? It seems... Forcing the network to satisfy all these related geometric constraints simultaneously leads to a better, more robust underlying representation in the shared transformer backbone. Their experiments showed if you remove, say, the depth loss or a camera loss during training, the accuracy of the point map prediction actually goes down. Huh. So the redundancy helps it learn a more complete geometric understanding. That's counterintuitive the cool. It really is. It suggests it's learning a holistic view, not just isolated tasks. And there was another interesting detail about the point maps. Oh, right. They found that even though the network can predict the point map directly, sometimes they got slightly better results during inference by taking the network's predicted camera poses and predicted depth maps and then calculating the 3D point map using the standard geometric projection formula. So using the network's outputs, but doing that final geometric step yourself could be more accurate than trusting the network's direct 3D point prediction. Sometimes, yes. It's an empirical finding, suggesting maybe the factorization into camera and depth is slightly easier for the network to predict perfectly, even with the multitask setup. Okay, fascinating detail. So summarizing the architecture, big transformer, alternating attention for multi-view understanding, multiple heads predicting cameras, depth, point maps, and features for tracking, all trained together multitask style. That's the core innovation. How does it stack up in practice? This is where VGGKT makes some bold claims. The key takeaway is that it's direct predictions, the ones coming straight out of the network without any extra optimization, are often very competitive, and in many cases significantly better than prior state-of-the-art methods, even those that rely on slow, iterative post-processing. Better than optimized results, but coming out in seconds. That sounds almost too good to be true for anyone who's waited for traditional reconstruction pipelines. 
It's a big claim, but they back it up. On multi-view depth estimation, using the DTU benchmark, they report substantial improvements over methods like BUSD3R. The error scores are significantly lower. They argue it's because VGGT naturally handles and learns from many views at once during training. Okay, lower error on a standard benchmark. That's solid evidence. What about point map estimation? You mentioned E3D. Yeah, same story there. Even comparing against methods like DUST3R or MSD3R, which might use like seven to nine seconds per scene just for a global alignment optimization step. Which is quite a long time if you need it fast. Right. VGGT's feed forward prediction taking maybe 0.2 seconds still manages to outperform those optimized results on accuracy metrics for the point maps. And the visual results they show, handling tricky things like textureless areas or repetitive patterns where pairwise matching struggles look really compelling. Speed and accuracy directly from the network, that's impressive. And camera pose estimation, that's a classic tough problem. On benchmarks like the IMC Photo Tourism Challenge, which is designed for large-scale, unordered image collections, its feed-forward pose accuracy is right up there, on par or better than previous deep methods before any geometric refinement like BA. So the raw output is already high quality across the board, but yeah. can you still use bundle adjustment if you really need that extra bit of precision? Yes, and that's another strength. While VGGT's direct output is great, you can feed its predicted poses and structure into a traditional BA routine. And because VGGT's predictions are already so good. BA has a much better starting point. It doesn't have to struggle as much. Exactly. It converges much faster and can push the accuracy even higher, sometimes achieving new overall state-of-the-art results. So VGGT provides an excellent initialization for BA. So it's not necessarily killing BA, but making the whole VGGT plus BA process way faster and potentially more accurate than starting BA from scratch or a weaker initial guess. Precisely. It works well on its own and it plays well with traditional refinement if needed. That that versatility seems key. What else can it do? You mentioned flexibility. Well, it handles unordered image sets naturally, which is great for real world use. And kind of surprisingly, even though it's trained for multiple views, it actually does a decent job on single view reconstruction too. Just feeding it one image, how does that work with the global attention? If there's only one image, the global attention just effectively becomes frame wise attention. The architecture adapts gracefully they showed some qualitative examples, and it produces reasonable single image depth and structure. A nice bonus feature. And the internal features learned by the transformer, are they useful beyond just this reconstruction task? Very much so. That's a big point they make. The backbone learns powerful geometric features. They showed you can take these pre-trained features and fine tune them for other things, like novel view synthesis. Generating new pictures from viewpoints the camera wasn't actually at? Yes, and they show they could do this reasonably well even without knowing the input camera poses, just using the learned features and a target pose. It suggests the network learns a kind of implicit scene representation. Wow, learning the scene well enough to just render new views. That's powerful. Definitely. And they also showed that using VGGT's features significantly boosts the performance of separate point tracking models like CoTracker 2, especially on dynamic video benchmarks. Improving tracking in videos with motion, even though VGGT itself focuses on static scenes. Right. It shows the geometric understanding baked into those features is quite general and transferable. Okay. This thing sounds incredibly capable, but no system is perfect. What are the limitations mentioned in the sources? They acknowledge a few. It's not currently set up for fisheye or panoramic camera lenses. Performance can drop if the input images have really extreme rotations between them, or if there's a lot of non-rigid motion in the scene, like people moving significantly. So very wide angle lenses or highly dynamic scenes are still tricky. Makes sense. Yes. But, and this is a crucial counterpoint they make, because VGGT is an end-to-end -end trained neural network. Fixing these things is potentially easier. Conceptually, yes. Addressing these limitations might just involve fine-tuning the existing model on new datasets that include fisheye images or more dynamic scenes. You likely wouldn't need to fundamentally re-engineer the core geometric algorithms like you might with a traditional pipeline. Ah, the adaptability of deep learning. Easier to teach it new tricks by showing it more data compared to rewriting complex geometric code. Exactly. That adaptability is a significant advantage of the neural approach. And just briefly, efficiency. We mentioned speed, but any notes on memory or compute? 
They provide some details. Runtime obviously scales with the number of images, but we're talking seconds, not minutes or hours, making it much more practical for many applications compared to optimization heavy methods. It's aiming for that sweet spot of speed and accuracy. Okay, so wrapping this up, it really feels like VGGT marks a major step, maybe even a pivot, away from relying solely on explicit step-by-step -step geometric computation for 3D reconstruction. I think that's fair to say. It's strong evidence that a large transformer trained the right way on the right data can implicitly learn and directly predict complex 3D geometry from multiple images very effectively. Predicting cameras, depth, point maps, useful features all at once, quickly, giving you results that are often good enough on their own, or a fantastic starting point for refinement. And the learned representation is proving valuable for other tasks too, showing it's captured something fundamental about visual geometry. It really shifts the paradigm from calculation to learned prediction, doesn't it? The network develops an understanding of 3D rather than just following geometric rules. That's a good way to put it. It learns the input-output mapping of complex geometric reasoning. So, final thought for you, the listener. As models like VGGT get even better at this kind of direct neural grasp of 3D geometry, what does that really change? For robotics needing instant scene understanding, for AR VR mapping our world, maybe even just for how we casually capture and share moments using our phones, if creating 3D models from photos becomes this fast and almost effortless, what new possibilities does that unlock? It's definitely something to think about.